Hi guys, Missin back with you for another lesson. Today we are going to be looking at a particular type of plastic called thermosetting plastics or polymers. Their properties and their uses, why they are really interesting and really useful. And we're going to consider their use in composites as well. So it should be a quick lesson today. Let's get into it. So what are thermosetting plastics? Well, they are a result of chemical changes producing very strong bonds. No amount of heat can weaken them and they can't be reshaped. So not like our thermoplastics or thermoforming plastics where they can be recycled, for instance, again and again, chipped down, remelted and turned into something else. Um, what they are really good for is heat and electrical resistance. So whenever you are thinking about thermosetting plastics, when you're sitting in your exam, think about these two classic pictures and that will be a really good starter. So a plug socket and a pan handle. When you have a electrical spark go off, you want it dampened down. You don't want that to melt the plastic and cause a fire. If you have a pan handle over the hob, you don't want that to stop melting by the time you get back. That's not very useful. Okay, so our first uh, thermoset plastic is melamine formaldehyde, also just known as melamine. So what do we use it for? Well, laminates for work surfaces, electrical insulation, and as you can see from our pictures here, tableware. So its properties is that it's stiff, hard, strong, and chemical and stain resistant. That's why it makes excellent tableware, um, because it takes colour really well, so it looks really vibrant. It's stiff and hard, so it makes particularly good picnic wear. You can take it, um, take it outside, and if you uh, drop it, it's, it's probably likely to survive. Um, it's a little bit brittle, um, but not especially. And it makes uh, excellent uh, laminates because it's stain resistant and chemical resistant. You want to be able to um, spill stuff and not have it uh, acidify or damage the work surface. Our next one is phenyl formaldehyde. So this was the first commercial synthetic plastic uh, known as Bakelite. So it was first invented to replace uh, billiard balls that were made from ivory. So obviously that was depleting the elephant population and they, uh, there was a real need for these billiard balls, kind of like snooker balls, um, to be created, which had the same sort of density and properties. So um, it has a, a slightly off-white colour and if you ever see an old telephone, an old dial telephone where you turn the little dial around um, from the sort of 50s and 60s, that's almost always made from Bakelite. It's also used for laboratory countertops because similar to melamine, it has uh, good sort of properties which it can be, uh, make it beneficial for that. It's uh, often now commonly used as an adhesive, so like a glue, uh, and also a coating for things like weather and boil proof plywood. Um, so any uh, plywood doesn't um, tend to react to water very well and you almost never use it outside because the layers tend to shear apart um, because of the, the way that it's held together. But this uh, actually holds itself together much better. It's much more weather resistant. So the properties, it's electrically insulative and has a low density relative to other thermosets. Next is urea formaldehyde. So make sure you remember this one. There's our plug, our classic plug. Um, so products, uh, domestic electrical equipment like plug sockets, but also, as you can see from the picture, so also tableware, sort of similar to melamine formaldehyde. So you can see there are similar names, um, really quite similar uses. We're seeing quite a few overlaps. Properties electrically and thermally insulative, of course, we can tell from the plug. It's hard and resists solvents and detergents well, which also makes it good for uh, tableware. 
Now we are into the resins, a couple of resins to get you used to. Um, the first one is epoxy resin. So this works by having two parts, as you can see from this picture and this picture here. So you have a part A and a part B, and uh, depending on the product, it's usually 50-50 um, mixed together, but sometimes it's two parts of one and one part of another. Um, and uh, it will specify in the packet. So what do we use it for? Well, pretty much for casting. So like these little jewellery um, decorative items down here, which hopefully we're going to have a go at in class at some point, and also encapsulation. So anything where you are uh, keeping things sort of inside a layer. So like the surfboard over here. You can also use it as an adhesive, so similar to a glue, and uh, bond materials together. So the properties, it's good electrical insulation, it's very hard, uh, it's brittle and less reinforced, and also resists chemicals well. We're seeing a pattern here, lots of properties which are very similar to the others. So our first resin is epoxy resin. Our next is polyester resin. So what do we use it for? Well, casting and encapsulation and bonding of other materials. Sounds very familiar. Properties, it's stiff, hard, brittle and less laminated, good electrical insulation and resists chemicals well. Lots of similarities to the last one. To be honest, unless it specifies on the uh, on the packet, you will struggle to uh, identify whether it's um, a, a polyester resin or an epoxy resin. They are very, very similar. Um, as, as you can see, it's also used for things like um, uh, hard helmets um, because uh, it's, it's very hard and, and very resistant. So, to finish off uh, this lesson, I have a couple of really fun videos for you. Now, this, this chap is on YouTube. He's one of my favourite makers on YouTube and his speciality is uh, turning, so like wood turning on, on a lathe, uh, but also in resin. And he tends to combine the two. So this is a really fun uh, video. It's one of his shorter ones, which makes it excellent for, for this. And you can see how the process uh, works um, and a nice example of the kind of things we might could, we could do together in class. So give that one a watch. And then I've got one more for you as well, which is another of his videos. Uh, and this really demonstrates how these are chemical reactions. So here he shows you, it's not, I'm not really giving the game away, on the left you can see uh, this is a violent exothermic reaction, so a reaction giving off heat, exothermic, and uh, this is where uh, the chemicals have actually reacted not quite in the right way, but really sort of sets it in your mind that this is a chemical reaction for thermoset plastics. So, nearly done. We've last one is reinforced plastics. So we uh, have new composite materials. Remember, a composite is two or more materials uh, bonded together to um, enhance their properties. So two that I'd like you to learn about are glass reinforced plastic. Sometimes this is known as fiberglass, but the proper term is glass reinforced plastic or CRP and carbon fibre. So you can see the differences here. So this is glass reinforced plastic and this is carbon fibre. So they are tougher and more lightweight than the solid plastic equivalent alone, but they are more expensive generally, particularly carbon fibre. So carbon fibre is an amazing material, it's literally layers uh, um, bonded, uh, woven carbon fibres all layered together and then it's coated with a layer of uh, resin, some kind of resin, usually epoxy resin, and uh, and then it stays in this shape. As you can see it's been used in this high, uh, high class expensive car, it's often used for um, things like bicycles, for Formula One cars as well because it's incredibly lightweight so it reduces fuel and it gets them around faster. And glass reinforced plastic um, fiberglass has been around for quite a long time now, um, but it's still more lightweight than just the plastic alone, but it's also um, also resists um, 
uh, bumps and uh, damage a lot more. So if it bumps against a rock, for instance, it's not going. It's not anywhere near as brittle as uh, as most plastics on their own. Okay, so quick recap. So today we learned about thermosetting polymers. So we learned about epoxy resin, melamine formaldehyde, or known as melamine, phenol formaldehyde, polyester resin, urea formaldehyde. It's in the wrong order. <laughs> uh, and C, uh, GRP and carbon fibre, which are, of course, composites which utilise uh, different fibres with uh, resin layered over it. So hope that was a useful one for you. Um, have a good one and see you in class.